All right, guys, so we're going to start off today's video. We're going to be using Paul Mitchell Blonde Skylight with 40 volume plus Olaplex. We're going to do a 16th of an ounce of Olaplex. It will not dilute the formula. What we're going to be doing is I have uh, my model, Grace, and we're going to be popping in some chestnut highlights so my goal is not to get her super bright so i'm gonna do a technique that's gonna be nice and subtle uh very salon friendly technique so i think you guys will be able to use this right away on a lot of different guests we're gonna be doing some tees highlighting but also some hand painting so paul mitchell skylight has a nice smooth feel to it it's a clay based lightener so you get a smooth polish definitely good coverage Great lift. So we're gonna start off by painting, uh, hand painting. And like I said, we're gonna tease up the section. So as I work up the side, what I wanted to do is not take it all the way to her base. So I'm teasing the section and then I'm hand painting what's left, basically mid shaft to ends uh, throughout there. So that's gonna give it more of a diffused look. That's what the teasing does. I also don't like to tease the hair a ton. Um, sometimes you'll see people really tease the hair up. Definitely um, not against that, but for quickness in the salon, uh, this is more of a salon reality technique. I just tease it enough to give it that broken, uh, broken up feel in the mid shaft, and then I hand paint it to give it an even softer effect. So just going through there, soft tease, that's just to diffuse it a little bit, then I go through and hand paint uh, the rest. So basically what I've done is I've taken that rectangle off the top and everything underneath that basically from parietal ridge down is going to be hand painted and teased. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So while we're working on this side, I'm going to talk about the product a little bit. The Paul Mitchell Skylight is a great clay-based lightener. Those of you that are not currently using a hand painting lightener to do this kind of stuff, you can attempt it with other lighteners. But the great thing about a clay base, it gives it a smoother application. It also, um, you use the clay to help incubate the section, which will give you that lift. So as a, lo a lot of other lighteners, what they'll do is they'll go on the hair, they'll dry up so they don't lift as much with a clay based lightener it's going to go on the hair it's going to create kind of an outer shell around the hair shaft and help incubate that lightener so that it doesn't stop uh, working throughout it okay so now we're just finishing up that second panel again don't do a lot of teasing if you do a ton of teasing you're going to spend a lot of your time in the bowl trying to get that teasing out it doesn't make that big of a difference because we're hand painting through it so even though I'm teasing a few times, I was about four times through it, I'm very softly pushing that hair up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take down, this is like the piece right at her part line. So what I wanna do with that piece is I want it to be a nice strong chestnut color, uh, a little bit brighter right around her face. So I'm gonna take that little triangle out of the corner and I'm gonna paint right to the scalp in the very front and then feather it back off uh, towards the back. That'll give me that nice bright pop piece which you'll see in the end result. But you can see how it kind of fades back. Now we're gonna work through the top. Like I said, this is a quick technique for in the salon. This is not something that should take you a lot of time. Um, these are techniques that I really love doing because it has a, a maximum result with um, less uh, time in the chair, which is great for your guests because not everybody wants to spend hours in the chair, but also um, not every guest wants to be completely transformed and blonde either. Some people just wanna have that little pop or that little bit of richness put in their hair um, and this is what the technique's gonna do for us. So we're working diagonal forward throughout the very top section. Um, so diagonal forward partings, over directing everything back. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work almost like a V shape with the lightener. So what that means is I'm gonna come up a little bit higher on each end of the panel and then a little bit deeper through the middle. So the middle is not gonna have as much lightener on it, which is gonna give me a more shadowed effect. So now we're gonna continue on through the top section and I'm gonna continue doing the same thing. So creating that V look to the highlights, maybe get a little bit brighter, a little more saturation towards the front, but you'll be able to see that V look. So see that depth in the middle and then I paint everything else nice and high towards the top, just giving me a more shadowed effect. It's almost like uh, back in the, when we would do weave foiling, which some of you guys might still do it. Um, this is uh, an alternative to a weave foil, a little bit more of a natural effect, but it's just not painting all of the hair blonde, allowing some of that shadowing to be in there. 
So the last little bit I'm going to paint, um, this is her fringe area. So this is really a key area, and I'm going to go much brighter on the very front. So you'll see uh, right through that center I paint, um, I'm going to paint a lot of, of this section uh, completely throughout because that's going to give me that brightness in the very front of her hair. So that is our application. The only thing I'm going to do now is I'll go through the back and I'm going to do a little bit of hand painting just to uh, add some light pieces to the back, but I don't want a lot of stripiness or anything like that. So we're just going to go through. I'm going to take a horizontal panel. I'm just going to hold all of her hair at once and basically paint some highlights on there freehand. So wherever I want to see that brightness happen, that's where I'm going to paint. And I'll really work the product in. So we talked about saturation. The more saturation you get, the lighter your highlights are going to be. So in the very back here, I'm not giving it as heavy of saturation because I don't want it to be as bright in the back. You might see a little more product going on there, but it's also a lot bigger section. But I am painting it to a much finer consistency, so it's not really incubating it as much, so we won't get as much brightness. So the cool thing about this video and when we talk about salon reality is the product that I'm going to use at the end to create the chestnut color um, is actually a product called Colorcraft by Paul Mitchell. And the cool thing about this product is it's a customizable conditioner that has a professional purpose and also has a uh, take home purpose as well. So um, we're going to be using... Uh, a couple different colors to customize this color for Grace. She wanted a chestnut feel to her highlights. There's our end result you can see there. She wanted that chestnut feel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in two different colors. I'm going to mix them together. So there's two different ways to mix this product. The first way is the professional way. So we go in here and I add two of the tubes of the custom color treatment. And then I'm going to add about two pumps of each color to the bowl and mix it together. The take-home version is that bigger tub of Colorcraft um, custom color treatment that you see over there. I'm going to put a lot less pumps of the color, um, but customize it, mix it in there, and then sell it as a take-home product that my customer can take home and maintain their Colorcraft at home. So they use it in the shower. So you have a much more diluted, um, customized version here, and then you have your take-home version as well. So what I want to do is walk you guys through that application now. So we're going to start off, we're going to rinse Grace's hair. We did put Olaplex in the formula. That's our bond multiplier. So I need to finish that process. So I rinse her hair, towel dry it, do not shampoo it. I apply the step two, and I'm going to let that sit in her hair for about five to ten minutes. Depending on the timing in the salon, five minutes is fine. Um, that's going to help multiply those bonds, keep her hair from breaking. And then uh, after you leave that on for five to ten minutes, you're going to rinse it out. Once you rinse out the step two, then you're going to shampoo with whatever uh, shampoo you're looking to use. For today's video, we use the Ultimate Color Repair Shampoo. It's an anti-fade quinoa repair shampoo, so it's got lots of protein, helps keep vibrancy and strengthen uh, the hair, so definitely a good choice. And then we go in and we apply our custom color craft treatment. So I'm going to paint that from scalp to ends, really heavily saturating the entire uh, hair because there's a lot of different benefits. Not only is it going to color the highlights that we put in, but it's also going to color the base and it's going to add condition and shine to the hair. Check out the end result. Grace loved it. You could see that brightness around the face, that little piece that we painted, and then just a little soft uh, movement in the very back. So hope you guys liked the video. Let me know in the comments below.